So you've finally finished building your first PC. You've installed Windows 11 using this handy video guide. What now? Today I'm gonna to show you 10 tips in five minutes that will make your PC Master Race experience a million times better. Number one, install graphics drivers. If you turned on your PC and your screen looks like this, you probably don't have the right drivers. There's two ways to get these. You can either go search in the web for your model of graphics card, download the files and manually install them, or you can use a program like GeForce Experience to do it for you. If you own an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll want GeForce Experience. If it's an AMD card, you'll want AMD's Auto Detect Utility. I'll link them both in the description. They do all the work for you. You just press like two buttons. Number two, install motherboard drivers. If you're having trouble with things like no audio or no internet connection despite having your ethernet cable plugged in, you're probably missing some essential motherboard drivers. You can get these from the manufacturer's website. For example, if you own a Gigabyte motherboard, you go to Gigabyte's website, type in your model number, and it'll list you with all the drivers for your exact motherboard. The essential ones are LAN, that will make your internet work, and audio, so you can actually hear stuff. I'm not gonna show you how to install them. Again, it's like two or three clicks. Number three, install RGB software. You just spent a ton of money on all that RGB bling, so you probably want to be able to control it. There's a bunch of different softwares available, but you'll want to go with the one that matches the manufacturer of your motherboard. For Gigabyte, that's RGB Fusion, for MSI, it's Mystic Light, and so on. Once you've downloaded it from the official website, you'll be able to control any RGB components that are connected to your motherboard, including the motherboard itself if it came with RGB glowy parts. Speaking of RGB, I want to take a second to tell you about today's sponsor, Govi and their Flow Pro Bars. If you've ever wanted to light up your gaming setup with reactive RGB lighting, these things are for you. They come with a little camera you can put on the top or bottom of your monitor, which reads what's on the screen and outputs it to the light bars. Works for any type of content, whether you're playing games or watching movies. They have full app control as well, so you can customize them however you like, and there's also lots of scenes for you to try out so you can get inspiration for your room lighting. They react to music, they're compatible with Amazon Echo and Google Assistant, so you can add them to your smart home and control them with your voice. Yeah, they definitely spice up any gaming setup and take your experience to the next level. Check them out by clicking the link in the description down below. Anywho, back to the video, tip number four. Enable XMP. You spent the extra money on super speedy RAM, so you want it to run at its full speed. By default, it doesn't, let's fix that. Turn on your PC and spam the delete key or whichever one gets you into the BIOS. Swap into advanced mode using the indicated keyboard shortcut. Now things are gonna be slightly different depending on which brand of motherboard you're using, but here's the basics. If you're running an Intel CPU, you're looking for memory settings and then XMP. You simply switch it from disabled to XMP profile one. If on the other hand, you're running an AMD CPU, you want to look for DOCP or EOCP depending on your model of motherboard. On mine, it's listed under AI tweaker. Again, you just enable the first profile. Save changes, restart, and your RAM will be running at its advertised speed. All right, number five, change your fan curves. If you were hoping your PC was gonna be quieter than what it currently is, you probably haven't messed with your fan curves. You can either do this in the BIOS under fan settings, which is usually listed on the main screen, or you can do it within Windows using a simple open source fan control program like this one from GitHub. Essentially what we wanna do here is make it so that the fans only reach certain speeds when the PC reaches certain temperatures. You don't need your fans running at max RPM all the time, it's just generating unnecessary noise. So try experimenting with different fan curves to get your PC a whole lot quieter. On to number six, set your monitor refresh rate. This one is kind of a meme. There are people that have 240 hertz monitors that still have their refresh rate stuck at 60 hertz because they never changed it. And it's been two years, don't be that guy. Right click on the desktop, go to display settings, click advanced display, click the drop down menu where it says refresh rate and whack that up to the max. Bonus tip, don't forget to change the FPS limit in your games too. That would be like surviving a failed parachute and then breaking your neck because you tripped on a pebble. Don't forget to do it. Number seven, always on top. That's what she said. Have you ever tried to open up Task Manager because a game has crashed and it's hidden behind the game window? Not very useful, here's the fix. Open up Task Manager, click Options, then check, always on top. You'll be glad you did it the next time a game crashes. Number eight, disable startup apps. Many programs will try to start with Windows and sometimes that's a good thing. It's pretty convenient when Discord auto starts for you as soon as you log onto your desktop. What's not convenient though is when programs you don't use start with Windows. All they're gonna do is slow things down. In fact, if you type startup apps into the Windows search bar and hit enter, you'll see a list of all the programs that start with Windows along with the impact they have on available system resources. Basically, disable all the ones you don't use. I'm looking at you, Cortana. Number nine, 
Replace your default browser. Get rid of Edge, it's trash, no matter how many times Microsoft tries to ask you to just try it one last time. Go for a browser like Chrome or Opera GX. I actually recently switched to Opera GX from Chrome and I have to say, I really like it. It's got some cool features built in for gamers, there's lots of little things you can do to customize it, and I just like the overall look and feel. It has sound effects built in for when you type in, along with a forced dark mode setting, which makes all web pages dark. In terms of setting it as your default browser, just type default apps into the Windows search bar, type in Opera or Chrome or whichever browser you're using, and click the set as default browser button. That's it. Number 10, install VLC. Windows built-in media player sucks. There's lots of file types that it just can't play without downloading some ridiculous extension. Do yourself a favor, download VLC. It's free, it plays anything and everything. Don't forget to set it as your default media player using the method in the previous tip. You'll be glad you did. And bonus tip, create a game folder. You'll probably want to make this on your secondary drive if you've got one, but just make a folder called Games. Anytime you download a new game launcher like Steam, Origin, or GOG, install it to the game folder you created. That way it just keeps everything looking neat and tidy, and you'll always know where everything is rather than having to sort through hundreds of different program folders in the default program files folder on the C drive. That's all from me. If you guys have any other tips, drop them down below in the comments. I want to hear them. Subscribe if you're new. Watch this video to see an epic PC build time lapse. See you in the next one.